Hello everyone and welcome back to Of Bricks and Dragons. Uh, today we are going for our second um, episode or act or uh, part two for sure, however you want to say it. Um, so we have part two of We Are Not Ourselves. Um, this is the second part in our uh, Star Trek Adventures sealed book or uh, box set. So we're kind of going through that. So. Um, Kind of like what we did on the first one, I'm going to kind of read through it. Uh, so if you're trying to learn this or whatever else, and I'm, uh, I did do Fallout with the guys, uh, which kind of went all right. And I, if you've been watching in that, you kind of heard an aftermath of that. Um, hopefully, I can try and get uh, Fallout done up. Kind of what we did for the guys. Um, I see I have a couple things to take care of here that I wasn't thinking of, so now I'm looking for a nice eraser here. Okay, so we had some damage on our characters from before, and then we finished through, because if I remember correctly, I didn't lead our characters into very good circumstances, and technically they should have died. But they all healed up. So, let me kind of get this all erased here real quick. Um, I use mechanical pencils because unfortunately I seem to have issues with regular pencils. I don't know if it's just me and maybe I'm just not the brightest pencil in the box and I always end up breaking the tip. So I use more mechanical pencils but the problem I run into, and I don't know why I do, uh, the erasers always dry out on me. <clears throat> so I don't know what it is about me but I've always had that luck so um, getting an extra eraser. All right. So we have our, our cast, the three characters here. All right, and I'm going to start reading our synopsis here. So having informed Starfleet Command of the incident aboard the Alacabre, which I'm still messing up, I'm sure, uh, the player characters are now set to investigate the Klingon Armored Space Station Kotar. Um, which has suddenly gone dark. Before venting the station's air into space, its uh, commander transmitted a message in which he shouted, uh, We are not ourselves. Qatar was also the source of the signal that called away the Romulan warbird uh, De Decius. And again, I'm going to mess this up. At Qatar, the player characters discovered that the neural parasites had not only infiltrated the station, but had conducted genetic experiments with their Klingon hosts. Encrypted files reveal communication between Qatar and the Romulan in the Cordolian system. Uh, in the Cordolian system, the player characters find an abandoned mining facility. As they infiltrate the facility, the player characters battle parasite-controlled Romulans and uncover how the parasitic beings are, use, are using genetic experimentation to attempt to evolve into a singular species with their hosts. Along the way, they encounter an unjoined trill a uh, geneticist who has been aiding the parasitic beings and have the opportunity to convince him to switch sides. They also learn the parasitic beings are attempting to repair a location or a Iconian gateway to bring the rest of their kind from their distant home world. Uh, this campaign, so in the second mission in the three-part introductory campaign of Star Trek Adventures Beginner Set, uh, building on the previous mission, the El Combre, the player characters uh, will further un unreveal, or unravel, I'm sorry, the mystery of the return of the neural parasites, first seen in Star Trek Next Generation episode Conspiracy. Um, mission or the mission also includes new game mechanics with instructions provided to teach you how to apply them at the table. 
So, <clears throat> um, kind of adding on to what we already knew, which is why I really wanted to go into this, and I'm going to read a lot of the extra stuff. So, um, oh, my mind is a little fried here. Uh, and, and please forgive me when I mess things up, because I know we did this last week. I did this literally last week, Friday. So it was up on Saturday. Um, and in the week, I've been doing a lot of training for, for my new position at work and taking CPR class and all that stuff. So um, I'm my mind's a little fried trying to get back into right where we were. Um, and I honestly do have a harder time when I'm doing written campaigns like this. Um, if it's stuff that I think about all week, because typically, like the campaign I had written up for Star Trek or Star Wars, or if I would write it up for Star Wars, or if I was doing our Dungeons and Dragons, you know, because my mind is thinking about this, but because I'm concentrating on all these different things I have to learn at work, I do apologize. Um, but here we go. All right, directives. In addition to the Prime Directive, the directives for this mission are one. Protect Starfleet from infiltration by the neural parasites. And two, protect, protect Federation citizens. Um, game Masters begin this session with two points of threat for each player character in the group. Players begin each session with a single point of determination. So, our blue is our determination. And I'm going to throw three of them out here, although I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them. Uh, I think last time I had them all the way up there, and that's what we're going to try and do again here today. Now, I have a, I found it a little easier. Now, this is a, a nuts and bolts bag that I had handy in my toolbox. Um, however you want to do it. So I do have three, three points here <coughs> to add for our characters. Uh, I've got Lego minis out here, so that will be our, our stuff. I'm going to write on the top here. Grab my pen from work. All right. So Jake Sully is our red. Um, we have Harmon, which is yellow. And then we have Connor, who is white. That way I know which mini is who. Okay. And then uh, these bags worked out really well. They're just uh, like Ziploc, sure fresh, um, little um, snack bags. So I need six of these here. Looks like five, and last one six. All right. Um, I did the same thing with Fallout uh, because of having the, the tokens there. I figured it was a pretty good idea. Have them in a little baggie so that way I can try and hopefully keep everything going here as I move around. All right, so we got two tokens for each. Um, we have the maps here. They're just off screen as I move these up here. So that way we have all this set. All right. So now that I have, I know which character is which, I'm going to move our character sheets just off of here. <clears throat> I did not level anyone up. So we will see how this goes. All right, I got a noisier basement tonight because I, or well, this afternoon really, because uh, I got uh, other things running farther off in the basement. So again, if that picks up and it's really annoying, I'm sorry. I do apologize for that. Okay, so the We Are Not Ourselves Act One, Kotar Station. Um, I don't know what maps they they're gonna want us to use. But I will read our captain's log. <clears throat> uh, start aid 47520.7. Uh, Cavian Stellar Circuit 831.11. The return of the neural parasites has rattled Starfleet Command. While we are certain that the Romulan Star Empire has been compromised, we don't yet know the full extent. Whether the Federation has been infiltrated is unknown. But an air of suspicion has descended 
among even among the crew. They look at each other, wondering who among them may be working against us even now. We have left Starbase 117 with new orders Kotar, the same Klingon armored space station that called away the Dacius from the Alacabric, um, which has suddenly gone dark. Starfleet Intelligence intercepted an ominous message sent by the station's commander. In it, the Klingon appeared mad, as if suffering from some form of delirium. Uh, with flames roaring in the background, he shouted, We are not ourselves, before venting the station's atmosphere into the space. Uh, as we are uh, the nearest ship, the Klingons have given us permission to investigate. I have a bad feeling about what we may find there. <clears throat> Poor Klingons. No one should have to deal with something like this. Alright, so scene one at the edge of the Klingon space. We are going to read this. Uh, it says, uh, read the following to the set the scene to the players. So your ship arrives at the Klingon armored space station Kotar. At, or on the border of unexplored space, Kotar is a neglected outpost of the Empire. In its heyday, at the height of the Klingon expanse, this was an important station. Now it sits in one of the outmost frontier regions, but all, or all but forgotten. Only those who have fallen out of favor with their superiors find themselves posted here. So I'm going to guess we're maybe going to need a station. Um, as I look around me trying to figure out what I've got that would maybe work for a station in that. Um, I have plenty of Lego stuff so we'll figure something out here in haste. Alright, so for the fun and the excitement of it all, we are going to grab... That is our ship. Um, looking for something for a station. I guess we will use this. Only because it's nice, big, and round. And if I need a warbird or something like that, I'll I'll figure something out. But you know, we'll we'll figure something. Um, I've got another little little figure of self. Uh, so I'll keep that off to the side just in case we need it. All right. <clears throat> if I haven't said so before, which I don't believe I did, uh, please grab some snacks and a drink as we do this and we, we see how the adventure goes. Okay. So, as bridge officers, the players may now conduct their initial investigation using the ship's sensors. These are usually... Reason plus science tasks, assisted by the ship sensors plus science with a difficulty of zero. So zero dice. What that does, if you happen to remember, or if you're watching this in sequence and that, I will roll. I'll grab one of our guys here. Grab all three so they're a little closer. Okay, so we're going to work with Jake. Jake is going to roll, just trying to keep everything going here. Um, we have two dice. So we have two dice that we get to roll. Now, it's reason and science. So his reason is... Uh, and I'm looking right over his reason. and I'm Okay, his reason is a nine. So as I look at the sheet here, we got a reason. And science is right here, one. So that means I've got a ten or better. So I got to get under 10 plus the ship helps us and that is sensors and science. Now the ship, which I don't have a, a listing for the ship at the moment. So now I'm kind of at a loss. So I'm going to guess at this point, so I'm going to look back here and see if I have anything for our ship. In the previous, we have Parasite, we have Romulan Agents, um, Romulans. I do not see anything for our ship. 
Now, oh, wait a minute. All right, I'm going to guess that we have the Oberth a la cabre. So if that's the case, which is what I'm going to run with, it said we have sensors and science. So sensors are a 9, and science is a 4. So now that gives me a plus 13 here. So essentially, as far as I can tell, I have nothing I can I can fail unless I roll 20s. So um, with a difficulty of 2, but if a different attribute or discipline feels more appropriate, you may decide the players can use a different pair for their target numbers. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to roll these, and this is going to generate momentum but also complications. Um, bank any threat generated for later. So with what we have, so I've got a 1 and a 14. So if I'm adding these together, the only time I'm going to fail is if I have a 20, because I have like a 21 for uh, Jake. So that means both of these are successes. So that means that I have two more successes for Jake. I can almost use more tokens here. Um, and then I'm going to roll. Let's see. So I'm going to flip this around here. I'm going to try to save my spot here. Okay. So we have reason and science, I believe. Reason and science. So now we have Harmon. He's got a 9 there and another 13. So that'd be what, um, like a 22. So I've got two more for him. And then the same thing, same roll for uh, Connor. And Connor's definitely got it. Okay, so we're keeping everything up to where we need to go. Everything seems like it's all good. So, um, here's the problem I, I run into now. With all the, unless something fell farther down into the box, which I don't see. Okay, and I got another map here. Um, yep, that's, that's everything so far. So, um, I'm kind of out of tokens here. <coughs> But I will give them everything I can give them, which is three more tokens. So I guess we're capped out for everything we can go. Um, I will say in some regards I'm not a big big fan of doing the, the threat and, and all that all over the place. Um, as we get more into this, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit easier and make a lot more sense for me. But uh, it is something I'm just kind of trying to work on here. All right. Let's see. Ship's uh, sensors reveal the following information. One, there's no life signs on the station. Two, there are no other vessels docked with the station and none in sensor range. Um, three, escape, an escape pod drifting in an asteroid field shows one faint life sign aboard. It appears to be a Klingon, though armored with an exoskeleton. The pod has suffered some hull damage. So now we have... I will put him out here somewhere. Alright, so if we spend momentum, which we do have, we had one that I couldn't even give. Um, Kotar's infirmary is the only section on the space station that retains an atmosphere. Emergency bulkheads and hatches have sealed it off from the rest of the station. Two, the asteroid field is rich in uh, kelbonite, a refractionary mineral. See asteroid field below. Kelbonite, a uh, reference from or interference from this refractionary uh, mineral makes transporter use dangerous. 
It is also known to deflect energy beams, increase the difficulty of transporter and tractor beam tasks by one. So if we're going to get that escape pod in, that means that we have a plus one for our difficulty. All right. So instead of needing two dice, we're going to need maybe three dice or so. Uh, or if it's just a one die, it's going to need two or however. Uh, or really it's successes. All right. We want to rescue the Klingon because, I mean, as Starfleet, that's just kind of our bread and butter. We like to rescue people. Um, so here we are. We're going to... Uh, it leads us right into trying to rescue the Klingon, which is something I believe that we should probably do. To rescue the Klingon, there have, or we have two options. Uh, the players can risk using the transporter to beam the Klingon directly to sick bay, or they can use a tractor beam to bring the escape pod into the shuttle bay. Um, the player in the helm role must suffer maneuver or safely maneuver the starship one zone into the asteroid field as a control plus con task assisted by the ship's engines plus con with a difficulty of two. So um, I'm thinking what this is going to lead us into is we have a nice map here that's provided for us. And that is this one here. So I'm going to move this right here in between. <clears throat> and I don't know how much light is all going on there or whatever. So at this point, I guess I'm going to have to use their tokens. Because this map is definitely not going to work for everything else here. All right, so we have our Klingon floating out here in an asteroid. I don't know exactly where it's sitting. It doesn't show me this on the, the map. I don't see a map of any of this. All right, being a little difficult, I don't know what the difficulty is or what we need to roll here. Um, why don't we maneuver? So I got my pilot flight controller, which is Jake. All right, control and con task. Control is 11. Con is 4, so that gives me a 15 or better. And we also get the ship's engines and con. So um, it's showing a galaxy, but I'm, we were using the El Cabre. Um, control and con. Or engines and con, I'm sorry. So that's an 8 and a 3. So at that point, that gives us a plus 11. Um, I don't know if I'm doing this exactly right or not. Uh, I got an 11 plus my 15, so I don't see how I can fail this, but I do need 3 dice. Because remember, it said we had a plus 1. So. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe I'm right. So now I'm going to have to take one of those <clears throat> uh, one of those points away. Actually, I, sh I need to take two because we used one to kind of learn some extra information. So I'm going to grab two of these. I'm going to roll the dice. Okay, so we got three successes. Two of them... Um, kind of in the critical sense of we really did good. So uh, with it working in that regard let's see we don't have any complications arising from this because we did successfully make it. Um, so I'm kind of skipping over a couple things here uh, I'll read this anyways. If the asteroid is, or has struck the player's ship, which is not, you need to roll four dice, which we don't have to worry about. The damage effect from the asteroids is a vicious two. So for each, oh boy, so for each symbol like this, that would be two points of damage. Um... Because we actually ran into that, um, doing fallout. So, all right, 
it shields uh, no nope. okay I'm kind of skipping over some of this here uh, the starship launches or lurches to the side tossing the crew about roll an additional one nope we don't need to worry about that all right so now we're over there we can energize or we could try and pick them up. I'm thinking that if we just started and we, we went over, we successfully got them. I think we're there, but it says energize. So let's just read through this. If the players did not learn about the Kelvinite, then they learn about it here as the interface comes into play. Uh, the transporter operator detects the presence of the refractory mineral. Tell the players making the attempt about the location traits um, detrimental uh, effects. So, uh, using the transporter to bring the Klingon survivor aboard is a control plus engineering task. So, that would be... Um, I'm going to guess it's either going to be... Well, we'll use our chief of security. <clears throat> All right. So I don't know if he's going to be good at this or not. But let's just take a look at this. Control and engineering. So I have a control of 11 and engineering of 2. So that would give me a 13. So that's a pretty good odd right there. Uh, assisted by the ship's sensors and engineering with the normal difficulty of 2. So that means I have to roll two dice. To be able to get this. Um, now. Sensors and engineering. So I got a, a 14. Plus a 9. Um, that takes me up to a 23. And engineering is a 3. So that takes me up to a 26. So, with big numbers like this, I'm thinking I'm messing something up somewhere. So, if I am messing this up and anybody knows better, please, by all means, let me know in the comments below. Because uh, I'm trying to learn this and I'm trying to help explain this as we go along. And I admit, I am not perfect by any means. And if I'm messing this up, feel free to roast me on this. Uh, okay. So, I do have two successes. One being a critical success and an 18 being a normal success because if I needed a what did I say a 26 or less which just seems off to me but that's the way it looks like from here okay uh, one of the other things I've been doing is as a home roll if I come up with a one it adds a, it, it, it kind of like a throwback to the old Dungeons and Dragons you do like double damage or whatever else a one counts as like two successes, so it'd be like three or whatever. Because um, you can't count on getting a one or a 20 anyways. But that's a home rule that we were doing for our fallout. Uh, I'm just trying to do this as a normal, but that's an idea that you could maybe do for your own group if that's something you like. Um, all right, so we have four bullet points here. We have a plus one since the Klingon is not on a transporter pad. We have plus one if the designation is not a transporter pad. This applies. Oh, okay. So these are other things. Um, if the destination is not a transporter pad, this applies only if the players are beaming the Klingon directly to sick bay. I would take them right into the transporter myself. Uh, plus one for the interference from the Kelvinite location trait. Negative one if the task is performed from a transporter room, which is exactly where I would be doing this from. To, from a transporter to a transporter. So we have one negative, which should also interfere with the Kelvinite. Um, we do have a plus one because the Klingon was not on the pad. So as far as I'm concerned, we needed the three to succeed. With an 18 and a 1, I did not buy an extra one, so I I will grab one of those, and I need, I got another 1, but I do have to take one of those points away. Alright, so 
So now that's being used. Okay, so we successfully did it. Now if you had the one as a double success, I wouldn't have needed to do it. But there again, not knowing if you can count on that or not, um, I probably would have spent it anyways. Okay. So using a transporter is a power requirement of one, a ship's, ship generates power equal to the engines. So here we start learning more about the ship, which is wonderful. So our engines are, I think it said three, on, because I'm using the Oberth here. Engines are an eight. Okay. So that takes our engines down to a seven. A ship generates power equal to its engines. See player ship stats. Since a ship operates at full power at the start of the of each scene, the player uh, the players will be able to meet the requirement. Now, players will be able to improve the odds by buying additional D20s to roll with momentum, or by adding a threat. A failure results in the transporter signal degrading with deadly consequences. In other, in other words, the Klingon's pattern is lost. So if you really want to think about it, think about it from the Star Trek The Motion Picture where we had uh, the science officer and a extra officer. I don't think that they really... I know they said a name, but I don't remember what position that officer had. And then they kind of just crumbled down to a lump of goo. Not pretty. Okay. So... Because we have already done that, I'm going to skip over engage a tractor beam, but there is in here. Using the tractor beam would be a control and security with the ship assisting with structure and security. Okay, and it has a difficulty of three. And it also says complications occur on a D20 result of 18, 19, or 20. Now, because I already beamed them onto a transporter pad, and we already did that. I'm not going to worry about it. Rescue the Klingon, or the rescued Klingon. The player characters successfully rescue the Klingon. Read the following out loud, which is what we have here. The Klingon is unconscious. His cranial plates are unusually thick. And his body has developed an exoskeleton. Paralyzed from the waist down, he is a horribly muti or he is hor horribly mutilated with a gruesome injury on the back of his neck. He dies almost immediately after you rescue him. So unfortunately he was a goner anyways. Um, inform the players that they can conduct an autopsy in sickbay. This is a reason plus medicine, medicine task assisted by the ship's sensors plus medicine. Now, neither one of my characters, I have only three, are medical officers, so I'm not doing that. If I was going to do that, or say I have a doctor doing that, um, I'm just going to do a generic doctor and say that they'll probably have... I, I'd give them like a 7 as a base with the... You know, I'm, I'm still learning the whole base here. So I'm going to say a 7 at base and doing the sensors of medicine from our birth here. Um, sensors being a 9. Uh, medicine is a 2, so that's an 11. Plus that 7 gives me an 18. So I'm just going to roll a 2. And I got two sevens. So they did successfully do that. The, the medical officer being whatever, uh, has done that. All right. <clears throat> so it looks like his mutilations appear self-inflicted, as if he died cutting a parasite out of himself. Brave Klingon. The Klingon was in a de-evolutionary state, reverting into a primitive form of his species. Spending momentum... To obtain other information would reveal. Now we're not going to spend this, so my characters aren't going to know it. I'm going to read it off for anyone that wants to know, uh, because you're listening to this and your popcorn tastes pretty good. I'm hoping the alien DNA was artificially introduced into the Klingon's genome. A key source of 
nucleotides in the alien DNA matches Starfleet's medicals, Starfleet Medical's database for the neural parasites. The neural parasites DNA was rewriting the Klingon's genome. When the players are ready to start the next scene, and as always, remove one point of momentum, which now we're going to have two at the end of the scene. And actually, they weren't even calling that momentum. They were calling that something else. So we don't have any extra momentum. We've kind of used it all up. So at this point, if I need anything, I've got to incur threat. Okay. <clears throat> so scene two is the mystery of Qatar. Um, a lot of player characters e uh, to easily beam to Qatar as they have ample time and no uh, obstacles to use uh, to the use of the transporter. Note that if they wish to go anywhere outside of Qatar's infirmary, which is where we're beaming into, they will need environmental suits, which cost one momentum per suit. If they beam to the command level, for example, they could learn about recent visitors to the station. They could even access the station commander's logs and the environmental controls. Now, personally, I think if we're having problems with, with transporting, I would be inclined to use the suits, which would give me, which would cost one momentum, but I'd also take a shuttle over. I'm not going to want to beam over. Um, and I think I'd want to go that way. So if, in my mind, working that through, uh, I don't know if I would really need a momentum to spend. But it says it here. So, and, and this is my whole thing where, you know, I like to add in things of, you know, doing the momentum and all that. Of course, I think differently than other people do. And how you want to run your game is how you guys run your game. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, me, personally, I would take a shuttle over there just to make sure that we don't lose any life going over. I think that would be the safer bet and would be probably the better bet. And then kind of close things up and then start going through. Um, either way, however we get there, we're at the infirmary. Uh, so we're going to follow theirs. We're going to beam over. Uh, the infirmary is a cramped and dimly lit two-room ward. Uh, mutilated Klingon corpses occupy the four bio bed or the four bio beds, not four, in the main examination room. So we should have a map of this, and I don't have it here. The good news is, because of my silliness with Star Trek and liking it and all that, I did see that we had um, <clears throat> maps available for a while, although I had not picked up the game. All right, that's not going to be it either. So, let's see what we got. Uh, Sleeping Beast. Alright. So I'm going to look up here. I've got a bunch of other maps here. So um, I'm going to flip through these. Nice little shuttle bay. Astrophysics. Looks like a medical. An engineering for a space station or so. Uh, some rooms. These are smaller panels here. Um, this is something else. I was going to kind of do this as something as a different video, but you guys get to see some of these as it is, which is fine. I don't have any problem with this. Um, see, now this works out pretty good because when I was talking, talking on my one video about ship crewing, see how we have different bridges set up. So depending on what you all have available, um, I flipped that around already. For today, I'd want that one. Okay, that's going to be something else. That'll be something else. I don't have a medical bay looking at it very or offhand. So, 
Um, yeah, I just don't have a medical bay. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to grab something else here. We're just going to call it a quick little medical bay or so. Um, and we're just going to do that. So looking at this, just kind of... Kind of looks like a possibility. Uh, 10 forward engineering captain's quarters, another engineering or so from the looks of it. Um, let's see, what can we do? All right. No. Kind of close, but not quite what I'm looking for. All right, so let's, let's look at these again. Just trying to get us something that looks somewhere close to what it should be. Um, <clears throat> maybe they even have something here, I just didn't see it. Alright, well, not quite. Alright, well, with all the fun decisions of things, I'm going to call that our medical bay. And it's, in some regards, I think this should be a much bigger map. You know, our figures don't sit very well. Even using the tokens, it doesn't seem like it's it's very good. But this will be our, our medical, and we'll just kind of do this. Make it work as best we can here. Okay. Dun, da, da, da. Let's see here. Now. Uh, the infirmary is a cramped and dimly lit. I already read that. Um, let's see. I'll just kind of reread this again. I, I'm sorry it's repeating. Uh, the infirmary is a cramped and dimly lit two-room uh, two ward. Mutilated Klingon corpses occupy the four bio beds. So we're going to say these are all mutilated Klingons. Along with four dead parasites. These parasite beings appear different. Larger than the one encountered um, on the Al Cabre. The station surgeon is slumped on the floor, stabbed in the back with a uh, Dak Tang dagger. Okay. So if we were to examine the bodies, and if they wanted to or whatever, you can use a medical tricorder. I... Let's see, flight controller. Knowing that we're going to be needing this stuff, I think our security officer, uh, Mr. or our, our uh, Connor here, he would probably have a tricorder, a medical tricorder over here just to do, do some checks. Um, and the only reason why I'm throwing him under the bus on this one is if I knew I was going into a more medical heavy situation, I could use a medical tricorder as a regular tricorder, plus also do some medical scans. Especially with little parasites and all that, I think I'd really want to know what I'm, I'm walking into. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna do a reason plus medical task with a difficulty of three. Uh, remember to consider uh, an, app an applicable focus, such as xenobiology. If the player, player characters never examine the Klingon from the escape pod, then here is where they can learn about the self-inflicted mutilations, the alien DNA, and its effect on the Klingon genomes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be sitting in here, kind of scanning them. Now I need three of these, so... Um, I guess I'm going to have to push a threat if I need three successes in order to do this. Oops. I get a couple extra threat tokens. So I'm going to throw out an extra threat here. Okay. That gets me. Oh, and I did not make it. All right. Because I needed reason and med medicine. My medicine is a two. My reason is an 8, so that gives me a 10. So I did not make it at all, period. So I incurred a threat on something I know nothing about. 
Okay. The second room is a surgeon's Spartan office. It contains a desk, chair, and computer terminals. Accessing the computer systems reveals an encoded audio message that was never transmitted. To decipher it, the players will need to return to their ship with, uh, with the uploaded file. Now, <clears throat> if I can't play it from here, and I'm going to have the two guys there, if I can't play it from here, I think that's what we'll do. We'll try and see if we can't download it. Um, so I think I'm going to need reason and security. So let's see, we have Jake doing a reason and security, and he's a little bit better. Uh, he's our sh flight controller. So I've got a 10. And I'm going to have uh, Harmon kind of assist him. So that's where my extra die is going to come from. I'm not incurring any threat, but I need a 10 or better. I have two successes here. So as far as I'm concerned, we should be able to download it. Now, in order to get this uh, taken care of from the ship's computer, we'll need to return to their ship. I don't know why I can't just send it. Probably because of crystals. But here again, I don't... Well, there's nothing here so and there's there's no one else alive I think we've got everything we can uh, we were not able to get any information from the Klingons here as I fumbled on that one we're gonna go back um, which should be a no-brainer um, So we'll, we'll head on back to the ship, I guess. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to use somebody that's a little bit better off at this. So um, we'll actually take one of the engineers that would be better at this, and we'll have them. Of course, uh, if I give any, if I just come up with numbers right now, I'm just saying seven for theirs. Uh, our our characters, we have a reason and security risk reason. Security, so I got a 12 plus the ship with security and communications. Let's see here. Um, security and comms. Okay, so that's a 10. So if I'm adding the two of them together, I've got a 20. So you know, I got 214, so that should actually make it. So what we have here, oh, three. Having an assist, and I had a one, so that should definitely make it. All right. The Kotar project has been an abysmal failure. Besides myself and a few notable uh, exceptions, the Klingons are proving to be very incompatible species for integration. I have not been able to overcome their person uh, propensity uh, to regards or to re regress into primitive primitivism. I recommend we abandon the project for now. Our plans will have to progress without, and the message ends abruptly. So now we have command level. If the player characters have uh, beamed to the command level in EV suits, which they did not do, we have something else to read here, which I am not going to do. Um, <clears throat> so we have logs for the command, uh, for the commander, and all that. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Da, da, da. I guess we're going to have to get sent over because we need to know anything else that we can have. So now we're going to beam back over. I guess we're going to have to try and try and figure things out in the command center. We will be in the EV suits. All right. The command level functions as the operation center for the station. Uh, in, in size and design, it resembles a bridge of the late 23rd century bird of prey. Four support struts angle uh, into the red lit room of its circular edges. An elevated command chair and console sits opposite of a hexagonal view screen. Uh, a recessed crescent uh, in the front of the command chair holds uh, several, op several operational consoles. I'm trying to read this with, with, with lights kind of on the paper. Um, on either side, two right rotating gunner consoles control the station's disruptor turrets. Um, so, if we want to try and access logs, uh, power things up and all that, which we will have to do. Uh, we have a control and engineering task. We have our flight controller. We have control of 11, engineering of 2, so that's an A13. And we are going to get help by our, um, by Harman. So we will have 3. Okay, so I've got a 13, so that makes it a 10 and a 2. So we definitely get the, the lights turned on properly. Everything starts going. And it did say we needed three, a difficulty of 3. I figured having someone help out was probably a good, good bet. But we needed 3 anyways, so we did get 3. All right. All right, so with this, we have we have success that reveals a Tellarite freighter routinely docked here, making runs between the station and um, Cord Cordelian system, uh, spending momentum to obtain information, which we're, uh, we weren't intending to. We don't have any momentum. So every time I need that, I get to spend threat. So that means that other things are going to happen. Um, I really don't want to spend any threat here. Um, but I will say if he's been going there, that's probably our next move. Uh, for anyone that wants to know this, uh, just like we don't know what's going on with the Klingons and anything else, I read that, but they don't know it. Uh, security footage of the docking port shows two Klingons entering the Tellarite freighter. When they exit, an hour later, a brief glimpse of a Romulan can be seen inside the ship. Uh, the Tellarite freighter last arrived a month ago. The next day, the station's doctor placed the infirmary under quarantine. Okay. Now, we do want a captain's log. We want to just check that. So... This is a Burrell, uh, or this is Bertel, son of Matak, uh, commander of Qatar. Star dates have no meaning here. In the seventh year of banishment to this forsaken station, for my father's dishonor, the fifth Tellarite sickness continues to spread. Five of my best warriors are now quarantined in the infirmary. Their fate is unknown, but I have instructed to Pach the Hakwai uh, that uh, failure is unacceptable. This is no kind of death for a warrior, even one in this accursed place. Second long, this is Betrel, son of Matath, uh, commander of Qatar. The Tellarite is long gone, but our warriors remain locked in the infirmary. Tapa claims he is doing all he can, but there is something strange about him. 
He has not been himself since this plague began. I must see for myself. I'm going now to the infirmary to comfort him. Or, oh, to confront him. All right, so. Um, let's see. I'm trying to kind of journey through this. Now. With this, we're going to beam back over. We're going to uh, journey to the Kodolian system. Once the player characters return to their ship, they may decide to learn all they can about uh, which we had already beamed and then came back with EV suits, which we didn't have before. Um, while en route, uh, they're going to learn a lot of the stuff. If the... Um, if they inform Starfleet Command of their findings, which is the proper thing to do, um, they will be instructed to proceed with both urgency and caution at warp 8 to join. Uh, the journey takes one week. Um, now, I, there may be a different ship, but we're still using our Oberth, seeing that it's already been used. At this point, I'm going to kind of consider this part of our normal ship's um, or our, our normal ship. Let's see, vessel. Uh, and that is so far. That is the only ship uh, that I'm finding. So uh, there might be a ship at the very back of this, but I'm not really finding anything else. So that's what we're going to continue using. All right. As the players consult the ship's computer for information about uh, Condolian system, read aloud the following. Let's see here. Ship's records show a Klingon outpost on the sixth moon of Condolian six or Condolian four, a gas giant. The Klingons mine the frozen moon uh, for diametic ore until abandon, abandoning the operation during um, the economic disarray that followed the destruction of Praxis over 70 years ago. The diametic ore produces a disruptive field akin to the atmosphere electrical storms. Uh, it scrambles sensor readings and communications. I would say we're going to use a shuttle to get over. As such, it makes this for, uh, forgotten and out-of-the-way location a suitable place for those who wish to operate in secret. So, Act 2 of We Are Not Ourselves. Con Cordolian 4. Scene 1. The Condolian System. As the player ship enters the Condolian System, ask them if they want to conduct an initial sensor sweep this is a reason plus science task. Um, actually, I'm trying to figure out, because we're going on an hour here. Um, this seems like a short span, but I usually like to, well, I guess we'll con continue. Never mind. All right. So, um, we're going to use our sensors. This is a reason and science task. We'll take our pilot here. My reason is nine, science is one. With the ship's sensors and science, which I kind of took my paperwork out of, um, here we have sensors is a nine, science is four. So that gives us a 23 or better. This is a difficulty zero. And I got a 20, which is a failure. And I got a five. So we still gain one here. Now, with this being what it is, we have occurred extra here. Now, I'm not going to do it because I'm trying to rush through this last part here. Getting here, having the extra threat, I would have some sort of small ships or something. If we're only using a berth, I'd have some sort of minor ship to run in here. 
run into that would actually cause a threat or to to make it a little bit more difficult if I had two ships two like little transports that had some minor guns I would use those and I would take this out of here uh, which is why I'm taking these two away that's what I would do something minor knowing that I'm not very good at combat and all that uh, we'll, we'll just talk our way through it uh, we'll get through uh, but that's what I would add because I had something going on. Something just really light, lightly offensive. Uh, if they're taking over small transports and stuff like that, I would use two transports. Okay, so just got a little drink here. All right, so... Um, the Cordian system contains 12 planetary bodies. The five outer planets are frigid class K worlds with methane and nitro, uh, nitrogen ox, uh, atmospheres. These are followed by four uh, rigid class J gas giants. The three remaining inner planets are class H worlds with temperatures hostile to humanoid life. The gas giant uh, Cortolan 4, which I'm sure I'm messing that all up, contains 24 rocky and frozen moons. The mining outpost is on the sixth moon. Once you orbit around the sixth moon, they can scan the outpost with a reason and science. So that's what we're going to do. Um, has a difficulty of 2. Reason and science. I have a 10 with the ship's sensors and science, which is now uh, science is 4, sensors is a 9, so that takes me to 23. So I got a 1 and a 14. All right. Uh, this increased difficult uh, this increased difficulty is due to the unusually strong disruptive field produced by the moon's uh, cache of diomagnetic dio ore. Whew. That's a hard one for me to just spit out for some reason. This is a location trait of the mining outpost because of its intense effects the trait is treated as a as two identical traits this is denoted by the number after the name so uh diamagnetic field two since this counts as two traits it increases the difficulty by two on all sensor and communication related tasks this includes sensors aboard a starship in orbit or or scans from a tricorder on the moon's surface. So when we get down there, it's going to be fun. A successful scan from orbit reveals the following, which we did scan. The outpost's antimatter reactor is operational, and sensors indicate multiple life signs because of the interference. Scans have no... or have are having difficulty providing additional details about the life science. So I don't know what it is, but there's there's something living down there. Spending momentum, which I'm not going to do because it just incurs more threat. Uh, but I'll read it anyways. While the interference is naturally occurring, it has been artificially amplified. Life science suggests multiple Romulans, a Klingon, and a Trill are all on the outpost strong or along with other unidentifiable life forms which we have no idea about we just know there's something down there all right so using the transporter again i would use if i'm having a, a harder time to get down there i would use a shuttle of course this is star trek and a lot of people just want to use the beaming i would use a shuttle to get down there so, adjust for interference to sensor lock. 
this is a daring or command plus engineering task so um, I have a daring of eight and a engineering dun, 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 of two so that takes me to a ten with the difficulty of two all right so I'm gonna have uh, Harmon kind of help me out here so I have three dice and I fail so I have a 17 a 15 and a 5 I needed a 10 or better or 10 or less so in order to make this work that gives me another threat so kind of going through this if I fail but I really need this to work I can incur a threat to make it work so we get down there and then it means that there's probably going to be heavier combat more people to shoot at stuff like that um, I don't actually have momentum at the moment so I'll take that away so going on from there <clears throat> okay oh and it does have taking a shuttle reason and con task so that was my idea so let me let me try this over with reason and con so that's a 13 with the shuttle using computers and con and I do have a shuttlecraft computers is six con is one that's seven so that gives me a 17 uh, control and engineering um, actually it takes me to a to a 20 because I had a 13 with control and then uh, control and, and con so all right, so I have a 12 here, I have a 16, so we made it, so I can take this one away. All right, there we are. So, let's see. The shuttle lands near the outpost. Uh, outposts close hangar doors. The players will need EV suits, which we were already using to exit the shuttle. Costing one momentum per jeesh. I already had them. and Alright. Well. It means that I'm going to have now have an extra one of these. I don't have any momentum. Alright. Pursuit. Oh goodness gracious. Alright. Okay. Inside the mining outpost. So now we walk in there. We're going to have to open the door. Um. I'm gonna say I would have to have it doesn't I don't see anything here I'm just gonna read this the player characters beam down um, they materialize in the outpost transporter room the transporter room is adjacent to the hangar where the player characters will find a Tellarite freighter with no one aboard the logs are logs and itinerary have been erased if the player characters pilot the shuttle to the moon surface, uh, then they entered the outpost from the airlock. This is down the corridor from the transporter room. Once inside the transporter, they can remove the EV suits and slow and stow them away. In either situation, as ask a member of the away team to scan for life in, uh, with their tricorder. This is an insight in science task with a, with a two difficulty. Insight is eight. Um, in science, which is, I get a one, so I need a nine or less. And I fail. I got a one, um, and I needed a two. I can ask someone to help, and we got a three on the help. It doesn't really show up very well, but it is a three. So with help, I'm trying to read the tricorder. And I knew that we were going to have, have difficulty because we are already talking about the difficulty of two being added on. 
So what should have been an easy thing is now more difficult. Let's have more people looking. All right. Oh, excuse me. All right, your tricorder is picking up life signs in the lower levels of the outpost, but it is unable to distinguish the life forms from each other. A uh, schematic of the facility's ground level displays a turbo lift approximately 20 meters from your current position. That's exactly where we're going. We'll just have to kind of play it out as far as I'm concerned. If the players spend a point of momentum, which we are not doing, so whatever's read here, we don't know. Um, to obtain information, they can discover the source of the di uh, diametic field's artificial amplification. Or, if they are not aware of this amplification, uh, they can uncover it here. A device in the reactor room on this level is amplifying the moon's naturally occurring uh diamag diamagnetic field. Sorry. Alright, trying here. If the tricorder scan does not succeed, read the following uh out loud. Uh, the interference from the diamagnetic field renders your tricorder scans useless. You receive a brief glimpse of the ground levels layout before the scanner turns to static. All you can make out is a turbo lift approximately 20 meters from your current position. Which I can run with that. At this point the players have two choices. They can either um, take the turbo lift to the lower level or explore the ground level. Well, why don't we explore the ground level? Maybe we can find something else out here. Alright, ground level. If the player characters explore this level, read the following out loud, which is exactly what we're going to do. Besides the hangar and the airlock, this level contains the empty empty quarters where the outpost guards, guards and commander used to live. You also find communications and sensor, and sensor stations, a mess hall, kitchen, and antimatter reactor. Except for the reactor room, this level appears abandoned and, a dis and in despair. The reactor, however, has been restored and recently maintained. A device connects the reactor. A device connected to the reactor uh, seems to be amplifying the natural disruptive field of the diamagnetic ore. So, let me see if there is a way. I'm going to use my my same role before. I don't know if it's in here. Oh, successfully disabling the device, which is a reason and engineering task. So, engineering, I have a 2, reason is a 9, so it's an 11, and I fail. I do not manage to get this off of here, and it has a difficulty of 3, so we're going to try all three of us together. I'm going to have 4 dice. Let's see, I get an 11, I have a 6, a 12, and a 13. So even with all four of us trying to figure this out, we don't do a very very good job. It's still kind of on there. Now, um, just kind of reading this, shutting the device down, which is not what we managed to do. Uh, removes the location trait, reducing the interference to normal. Uh, negligible levels. Allow this task to, to succeed at cost. A complication that arises from the reaction means that the player has tripped a silent alarm. The enemy is now aware of their presence. See the encounter on the lower level for effects. Okay, so essentially now we have another complication that gets added on. So, that is exactly what we're going to use. I'm going to take a quick swig here. Okay, so, now we're going to go to the lower level. We did manage to get that off of there. We're going to go. Um, 
When we exit the turbo lift because we incurred a threat. You exit the turbo lift and enter the wide corridor. So I need a wide corridor from turbo lift. And I think I'm going to get that right here. Um, I don't know if I have a map here or not. Um, on the floor, three meters ahead of you is a dead Klingon slumped in the entryway to the infirmary. His body prevents the door from closing all the way. He is terribly deformed with thickened cranial plating, huge tusks, and an exoskeleton breaking through his uniform. Now, because we have threat, I'm trying to rush this along. We're coming out here. There's going to be Romulans. I'm going to say we're going to throw out some three Romulans. We're going to shoot at them. Uh, remember, I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of this. Although, keep I'm going to keep this kind of really abbreviated. We're getting a little longer than I really want to do. But so you can remember how we were doing combat. So when you're doing combat, we're Starfleet. So it was seen if we're using anything but stun, it incurs threat. So we're just going to stun. Okay. So let me get our Romulans here. Which was back back a couple pages. Um, Romulan neural parasite sub commander. I don't want sub commander. I just want um, Romulan. Just regular good old fashioned Romulan. Okay. Let's see here. Unarm strike three. All right, we want the minor NPC here. Okay, because there's two of them on the page. I'm using the minor NPC, not the notable. Okay, so when we want to actually attack him, I don't see his hit points. Let's see here, because there is hit points in here. I'm just not seeing it because my mind is not thinking. Oh, stress. Uh, I believe that their hit points are stress. So, yep, okay. So they have a stress of 11. So, um, stress of 11. Let me grab some paper. All right, so this is what we were using before. Um, oh. This is actually from our fallout. So, we're going to have three Romulans, stress of 11. Let me grab a pencil. As horrible as it looks. We have our 1, 2, and 3. We're going to do 11. Okay. So, the Romulans knew that we, we tripped the alarm, so they're waiting for us. So, we come through. They're shooting Romulan and 1. He's got to get, um, because I do not have any armor on. So, I believe, let me kind of go back here a little bit. Uh, let's see here, set phasers to stun, that's what we had. So, I'm kind of going over this. From what we did before um, I know we spent a little bit of time with this this is week two for me trying to keep this correct um, when we were doing this with fallout we actually had some armor on so now I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing this correctly all right so we actually have stress not I do believe that we have to get a they have to get like a 10 or better to hit us so, I have a 16 and an 8. And I'm trying to find out. Um, okay. Well, I, like I said, I do, do kind of apologize. Like I said, I'm trying to go through this again just to make sure... Um, 
the fight for engineering. Character use cover and damage number sample. Um, all right. Let's see. I got someone making some noise over there. I don't know what they're doing, but I got someone making some noise. I think I have a young lady in, in her hutch that's making some noise. What I should do is I should probably put... Oh, she came, she came out of her hutch. Um, let's see here. Restoring engines. Um, take cover. When they take cover, it gives a plus two. You're right there, girls. Talking to the bunnies. Just like as always. Alright. <clears throat> the worst part is, is because I'm going through this and I'm trying to remember exactly how we did this. So we had an ensign that was with us and he had a stress of 10. Oh, resistance. That's what it is. Okay. That's what it is. So, I'm looking for my resistance. Um, I don't have anything for resistance. So, if I remember correctly. And I do really apologize. It's just trying to get all this, keeping all this straight here. Okay. Uh, concluding the conflict, recovering first aid, lethal attacks, survivors. All right. During during a turn in, in conflict, in any conflict, the player can attempt to attempt a minor action or a task. There's the initiative. Game master spend two threat. So phasers the stun. So we had to do everything in stun, otherwise we incurred more threat. All right. From single attacks, reduction in resistance. Character is reduced to zero stress. Um, what I'm feeling at is what my target number is, but I want to say it is 10. But I'm feeling at this to see what we have. All right. <clears throat> so setting phasers to stun. All right. Um, I believe it was was control and security, which is a fourteen. And I'm 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 dead certain I'm messing this up so um, that's why I'm really trying to make sure I'm doing this correct because I don't really want to get into combat here and then just start rolling dice and then I'm way off and then everyone's uh, using a phaser to cut the bulkhead to control and engineering Um, uh, let's see, investigate, set phasers to stun, which I'm back at that spot. <sighs> stun an opponent, you must declare that you are making a non-lethal attack before rolling the dice. Alternatively, a rank, ranking officer in charge to make that order. Um, unarmed attacks, special rules, guiling, gunning, worry, attacks, unarmed strike, escalation, lethal attacks, avoiding injury. Um, see this, this is just where I am. Okay. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to grab the book. 
our adventures book. Because if I'm drawing a blank and I just don't see it, I think the best way to do this is just simply grab the book. All right, difficulty examples. Ah, uh, speed, costs, advantage, ship damage. Um, Ship combat, ship rules, combat momentum spins. Okay, here we are. Disarm, extra penetration. Pen, uh, yeah. Melee or ranged combat determines uh, how a weapon is used. Um. Damage rating size, quantity, damage effects, area, qualities, knockdown, um, attacking damage. Attacker chooses the weapon for the attack. This can be arranged or other. So, the attacker then nominates a viable target. We are using none. none. So, okay, for melee it is... Daring and security with the difficulty of one. Of one. Uh, for range, it is control and security. There we are with the difficulty of two. Control and security. All right, so I don't know how many minutes I just spent there. I am sorry. You had to listen to me ramble on. Control and security. So I have control 11, security 14, so that's 15. I missed, or no, actually that's the Romulans attacking me. Now i got to find the Romulans again. Okay. Control and security, which is a 13 for them, so that we means that they miss. So we need a 13 to hit. 2, hit, 13. Alright. That's what I was trying to get. Alright, so for me, red, I'm going to put write mine down. I have a 15 to hit. Uh, we have yellow. Yellow. Alright, and he has control and security, so he's got a 13. 13. And then we have white. And he has a security. He has a 15. All right, so I have a better chance to hit than they do. Okay. All right, everyone. Here we go. Uh, Romulans. Second Romulan. Oh, he hits. And the third Romulan, they hit. Of course, now that I kind of know what I'm doing again, now we got her. Now, if I want to use uh, momentum or anything else, I can always dodge. I can try and dodge out of the way, um, which... Quite often you kind of see them doing. Um, let's see. Let me. Uh, I think that that was also a minor. Minor action here. Uh, let's see. Directives. Plotting course. And let's see. Piloting shuttle. That phases the stun. We're back to that one. So, uh, minor, let's see, character contempt one minor action or task. Um, let's see. Characters may avoid an injury once per scene. They are, or there are several ways. Okay, so you may attempt to temporarily ignore the effects. Um, Let's see. Rules booklet, page 14. So I got the rules booklet out. And this is something I was not doing on uh, last week when we were doing this. So, um, let's see. Pull a number of, if... If the attack is successful, the attacker inflicts damage. Roll the number of dice. If the target 
has any resistance dice from cover and the like, roll these dice to reduce the total damage rolled by one for each point of total resistance. Let's see. Nope. I was kind of looking to see if there was any minor actions I can do to try and stop any of this. Um, I don't have momentum, so that doesn't have any help for me. So I guess we're just kind of stuck taking whatever we get. Alright, so, like I said, I'm going to keep this kind of abbreviated. So they shot at us. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why we have that dice. So red gets hit. And, let's see, they had... Their rifle's dead. I'm trying to look here. Um, disruptor pistol. Yikes. Okay. Um, nope. Actually, that's the wrong one. Actually, the disruptor rifle is doing six damage. So I've got six dice here. Now, this is vicious damage. So unfortunately, every one of these is double damage done to me. Um, so that means that Red, who had, uh, that's Jake. He has stress of, what does it look like? Um, 12, 13, 14. He just took 2, 4, 6, 8 points of damage. Okay, so this gets really deadly really quick. So that means I would be marking that off. Uh, the next one hits and it hits 6. That's uh, white, which is Connor. And then again, I'm rolling 6 dice here. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points of damage to him. Um, I'm just going through this once. Like I said, I'm trying to abbreviate this. Then we're going to attack. Alright. I miss with, with red, yellow, misses, and white. White hits. Okay. Now we're using phasers, and we, our phasers only do uh, phaser type 1, 6. It does do 6. But it's, it's just regular damage. So that means that out of this, this is two points, three, four points to one of the Romulans. And we just go back and forth until this all resolves. I'm always ro rolling just horribly. So um, that would be one threat to take away from there. Hopefully our, our group, group would actually win. We're going to play it out that way. Um, just so you see how that threat starts adding up here. Um, we're going to end it here. We're just going to keep going on. I'm going to whip my whistle. Okay, so. Now that we've gone through that, uh, let's see. As a member of the away team, we'll scan the Klingon. So it's going to be a reason and medicine task. Just two. Uh, let's see, I got a 19 and a 16. I'm just going to guarantee I did not make that. So I think I had a... Let's see, reason is... 9. I think that was what? Science. So that was a 10. So I didn't make it for anything. Um, so the things that I did not learn was extensive genetic modifications have been made to the Klingon's DNA... A neural parasite, which is deceased, is still present in the Klingon's body, which I have no idea about. And the Klingon died only hours ago. His body appears to have rejected the genetic modifications. Now, I have no idea about any of this. Um, I might even be holding the thing backwards for all I know. Uh, whatever's going on, I'm, I'm just not reading it very well. Uh, there's other things. I'm just going to kind of skip over this. 
Um, we're going to get up to the infirmary, and then we're going to read this aloud. You step back into the corner or corridor. Two Romulan centurions turn the corner where the smooth walls of the outpost and the cavernous tunnels of the mines begin. The howl of some unseen creature echoes out from the tunnel. Because we have the threat, I'm going to say that we, we maybe kicked a stone or something like that, and then we were in a gunfight with the Romulans. Again, because I know I roll horribly, we're going to make it out of here. I'm just kind of going through this. We'll go. Uh, but it does say if the players trip the silent alarm while disabling the device in the reactor room, then the Romulans take a first turn, otherwise the players can act first, which we did do that. Um, I might have even taken a set of two of them, maybe added two more or one more to get rid of that, that threat here. Um, so we have Centurion, Romulan, or Romulan, Centurion, Notable, NPC. So we have abilities for this person. Again, we have a disruptor pistol or or a rifle. The either one of them has a vicious trait. So, with that being what it is, um, I'm just going to leave it be. Now they are immune to pain. So the uh, stimulation of the host. Uh, adrenal glands increase the host's resistance to pain, reduce damage from non-lethal attacks such as a phaser set to stun by three points. See, and, and you know, really the way that they want us to react is everyone is, you know, we're, we're doing everything in a very Starfleet typical way of everything is by stun which I guess I'm not really agreeing with. When I'm being shot at, I would rather just, you know, this is where I kind of disagree with the whole threat and all that stuff. Um, but I'm trying to follow the game as best as we can. All right, a fast recovery too. The host victim rega regains two stress up to his normal max at the start of each of their turns. Oh, my goodness, and I roll horribly to begin with. So if you're running your peer, your players through this, keep in mind they want you to use stun. This is where I'm kind of breaking from this a little bit. I would use full full attack, um, <clears throat> deadly force and all that, and then go from there. Um, that's me, though. And being former military and stuff like that, that's just kind of me. Um, all right, encounters entered the Romulans. Um, if the Romulans take the first turn, spend two threat to keep the initiative. Um, so we really get rid of all this. Um, and immediately pass the action to the second Romulan. Once both Romulans have taken their turn, the action p passes to the Romulan characters. Okay, so we, we're going to get rid of all those. If the Romulans are killed, the neural parasites leave their bodies by crawling um, out of their mouths. The, scent, uh, the creatures scurry back into the tunnel. You can use the stats from the first mission for the parasite without a body, without a host body, that is. If the Romulans are stunned, they will regain consciousness a little later. If the players haven't secured them, they will attack again with whatever they can, uh, with whether it's a knife, their bare hands, whatever. Um, so, we are not ourselves. Act three: mechanicians revealed. Okay. So the mine, scene one. <clears throat> to find the Romulans and Klingon, the player characters will need th to enter the mine. Read the following out loud. The corridor turns into a rough, hewn tunnel that snakes deeper underground. Stalagmites rise up toward the floor, or up upward from the floor, to the passage. The creature howls again, and voices echo up from the 
chamber ahead of you. It survived longer than uh, the other test subjects, Romulan says. We could have it, we could have studied it further. Um, it was just a thoughtless beast, a gruff Klingon asks, or said. Control the Klingon temperament or uh, or we will give you a more suitable host, the Romulan says. You have forgotten the, par uh, the part of patience in that body. The test subject did uh, quite a lot of damage before we were able to restrain him. That showed promise. That's far enough. A man says, standing up, or standing in a darkened side passage. You are only now just aware of. He points a disruptor at you. As he steps into the main tunnel, you realize this man is a trill. This is a this is an opportunity for you and the players to role play as your characters, acting out the interactions between. The away team and the Trill NPC. Tall Duran, um, as the game master, familiarize, your, familiarize yourself with his backstory and spool out bits of, and, and pieces of it through his conversation with the character with the player characters. So, trying to persuade Tall Duran. Tall Duran wants to capture the player characters. But doubt his uh, doubt is starting to creep into his mind about the whole project. To convince Talderon and reject the parasite's offer to be joined, the player characters must attempt a persuasion task. This is a presence and command task with a difficulty of three. So all three of them would be working together. So. I'm going to grab one one character. I'm going to say it's going to be Harmon, seeing that he would be... He's the one I was originally thinking as a fleet captain, for better or worse. We have a presence plus command task. His presence is an 8. A command is a 4, so that's a 12. I have 4 dice to help roll. I needed a 3. I got, three, I got a 3... Or I have a four. Um, I don't know if this. Yep, this is a two and a seven. So, out of a what did I say? Presence and command. Eight and a four. Out of a twelve, I have three successes, which was enough. Um, Two other players may assist the task by rolling 1d20 against their own presence and command. Uh, I'm going to say that we made it. Uh, okay, so. Players succeed. The player characters have convinced Talderon uh, to reject the neural parasites as his allies. Go to Talderon as ally. Alright. So we have stats for Talderon. Um, Tolderon is ally. The neural parasite sites discovered in Oconian Gateway. I don't know if it's look. I don't know its location, but I do know they're trying to repair it. I don't have to tell you what will happen if they succeed, but I have more immediate concerns. They are holding prisoners. A Tellerite merchant and his three human companions as far as the neural parasites have shown so far the neural parasites have shown no interest in them as host bodies they are de um, they are in detention cells in that chamber up ahead uh, i'm a geneticist not a soldier i'm afraid i won't be much use to you in a fight but if you end up captured, I'll have someone on, or you'll have someone on the inside. Tolderon won't join the party or the player characters in the conflict encounter, or 
the conflict encounter, but he will assist them as he can. Should they need them, need him, let the players roll any task that Tolderon might attempt. As an allied NPC, Tolderon may add to or spend from the group momentum pool and add a add the threat in the same way the player characters special abilities and cost threat to add to that pool. Now, <clears throat> encounter the last conflict. So what I see here is we're going to have a conflict coming up here. If I could, at this point, I would try and get our captured uh, allies here, which would be the Tholian and the other humans, to try and help out Give them the disruptors and that, and we would probably use that. Now, whatever it says here, I would say our captured allies here, because we have a couple weapons from before, I would give those or them those disruptor rifles. I too would probably use the disruptor rifles and see what we can do. We're going to get into a conflict here. Um, so, if the interaction with Tolderon does not result in a conflict encounter, the players may proceed to the chamber ahead. Read the following aloud. Now, I believe he said three other prisoners. I would have them help me out. I know that they're not Starfleet, but I don't know how many they're throwing out at us. I don't remember what they said. Crouching behind the stalagmites... You peer into a high ceiling or yeah, ceiling cave chamber. Two passageways branch off from the chamber, each with rail tracks in disrepair. Barred detention cells carved out of the rock face line the wall or far wall. In one of the cells is a dead, deformed Klingon, the other cells oh okay, so I can't use them. I'm still gonna pick up their rifles. The other cells hold the Tellarite um, and three humans. A Romulan Centurion, two Yulans, and a Klingon warrior turn from the cell and make their way toward you. So, what I'm thinking here is, if we have a cave kind of trying to do this in a in a federation way um, if I was able to grab those disrupt disruptor rifles from before I'd have grabbed them anyways um, I don't know if I could use them to possibly try and use them like a grenade or, or not uh, I'm just looking at it as these guys can take a bunch of damage and it doesn't seem to phase them all that much. If I can have something explode just as they get to it, that would be wonderful. Um, I would probably try and do that if I could. If the player characters try to persuade the parasite-controlled Klingon and Rhymelins to surrender, this attempt fails automatically, which I didn't think it would. They believe themselves superior to all other forms of life, begin a conflict encounter, and choose one of the non-player character adversaries to take the first turn. Use map 3.4 on the poster. So, we finally get a map here. 3.4. Okay, so, let me kind of hold my page here. This is our map. And I get to bring this back, flip this around. Here's our poster, which is what they wanted. Now here's our two cells. I'm going to grab... Um, trying to find the right ones here. 
course it really doesn't matter I'm just like well I guess it's about the right I'm just gonna throw these four here seeing it doesn't fully matter we have a Klingon in here then we have two of these fellows on two we have our Klingon and that nice gentleman right there okay oh, actually it looks like he's back just a little bit farther either way there we are okay now again I'm gonna abbreviate through, the, through this because I just do horrible um, and you guys have seen me do it our, our characters would have died before and they were rescued and all that so we're gonna kinda do an abbreviation of this um, so Dun, da, da, da. we're going to go through it, it, this would be a conflict like I said I'm going to abbreviate straight on through this so telling you uh, the Romulan Centurions there's two of these and they're going to have a stress of 13 they have a resistance of 3 and they are immune to pain now remember these guys were also regenerating uh, fast recover two so whatever damage I did they would recover two points every round so if I was to shoot if I had the drop on them and I'm shooting them I'm just gonna say I'm hitting them okay so we have uh, Romulan 1 Romulan 2 they have 11 11 um, Yulon we have uh, UH which is going to be that gentleman, and then our Klingon here, which is, we'll, we'll do a K here, and he's got a stress of 12. And again, he's got a resistance of 4, okay? And he also has that fast recovery. So even if I was hitting him, and I'm using those disruptor rifles, so our first one, so I've got, we got two, three, four, five, six, seven points of damage. Oops, just off the screen for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, let me just kind of swing this around just a little bit. All right. So I do six points of damage, okay? Now, the first guy, he's down to five. Um, let's see. He doesn't... Oh, he's got a resistance of three. So for me to do six points of damage, it's a good pencil. Um, I'm only doing three points because he's got a resistance of three. Now let's just say I'm I'm hitting with all three of these. So I'm I'm just wailing on that first Romulan. Okay, so I rolled. These two are hits, and because I'm using the Romulan disruptors, not even the regular phasers. So that's four points. Um, whoops, I wrote down three. I only took three off. So 11, that'd be, that'd be down. With the two hits, I'm down to seven. Seven points here. Okay. <clears throat> Third guy hits. And I've got one, two, three. Those two are really, these are null and void. I've done four, five points of damage. He's down to five. But now that I'm done shooting, by the time the next round comes up, he's up to seven already. Okay. And you, you're going to keep fighting this. And even if I keep wailing away and, and just going, I'm just doing horrible. Um, I know me rolling, I'm just going to do terrible. Um, in, in rolling with the guys in that... Um, they were actually I was rolling horrible my best friend he was doing really good um, his son he was doing okay and we had another gentleman that were when we were doing fallout he kinda hit about half the time I think out of a combat round against like uh, four creatures or whatever I only hit like once out of the entire combat so I you know I just know I do horrible I enjoy this stuff, but I know I do it horrible. Like doing this in a captain's log style, I can say, well, we jump out of the way, we do whatever. 
um, however it works. Uh, just trying to get this to go a little bit faster here. Um, we're going to get this through. We're going to start. We're not going to get prisoners here. But we're going to start going into the freeing captives here. The parasitic beings, prisoners, are the, are the merchants from the Tellarite uh, freighter. They are frightened and will want nothing more than to leave in their ship with no blue gills on the backs of their necks. Uh, medical scans confirm that the merchants do not have neural parasites and have not been experimented on. Helping them to share uh, what they know is a presence plus medicine skill um, with a difficulty of two if successful. Read the following out loud. So I'm just going to say that we made it so we can have this as we're kind of wrapping up part two here. Uh, the Rhymelands paid us uh, paid us well. Uh, all we had to do was bring them the supplies on their list and not ask questions. That was fine by us, but after what happened on Coltar Station, they locked us up with no explanation. I never should have trusted Romulans, much less ones that kept company with a Klingon. Uh, they've barely said a word since they turned turned on us. I did, however, or I did overhear them complaining once about uh, Tolderon and how his failures delayed their plans for Starfleet. However, that means they still owe us our last payment, though I just as soon forget about it and get out of here. Um, if the fa task fails, um, the merchants are too rattled to provide any useful information. We, you know, I'm just saying that we succeeded. Um, taking prisoners, which you know, we're, we're not taking prisoners here. We're Federation. Uh, searching for the Aconian Gateway, which we'll do. We'll just kind of take a look here. Hopefully, you don't. All right. The player characters may attempt to interrogate the the Romulans and the Klingons, which we were not taking any. You know, there was just no way I was going to be able to do this. Uh, so there are no prisoners, uh, but if he did, the location of the county and gateway, um, however, the neuroparasite's belief in their superiority prevents them from being intimidated or negotiated with. Nothing can shake them to reveal information uh, that would jeopardize their plans or the survival of their species. An investigation of of the facility reveals that the parasite infested beings have been uh, meticulous in destroying all records that could point to the location of the gateway or the mother creature. Player characters will need to find them um, some other way. So, our last bit here, but what if the adversaries win? The adversaries will attempt to stun the away team and lock them in a cell. If that happens, read this out loud, which I'll read out loud just because. Uh, you, wait, you awake, uh, disoriented from being stunned. As the fog slowly clears from your head, um, you take in your surroundings. You are in a small cell carved in a rock wall. Primitive metal metal bars block the opening and locking mechanism unseen. Beyond their large chamber where you battled the Romulans and Klingon is now empty. Save for discarded mining equipment, you are prisoners. Your weapons, com badges, and tricorders are gone. You have no way to contact your ship. Your thoughts turn to Conian Gateway. Surely... It will be activated soon, and you are the only ones who even know of its of its existence, which is exactly where I would have been. Um, this could be a uh, a great cliffhanger ending, ramp up the tension and the stakes for the player characters as you move 
in for the final mission. So at this point we are we would be going into our third act in the adventure. I, I will kind of put our character sheets right here. <clears throat> and this will be for next week. Uh, we are going a lot longer than I intended. I was hoping that we could knock this out in maybe about an hour. Um, hopefully I haven't made this very difficult to follow. Hopefully I've made some sense in what I was reading, what we were doing, any explanations and the rules and all that. And I do apologize. I spent a few extra minutes trying to come up with how to do the combat because, you know, in the, in the course of the week, I just kind of got turned around and all that and trying to remember exactly how that went. I, I, I wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly. So, um, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you find this useful and all that. Uh, I appreciate you visiting. Uh, thank you for sitting around the pool table with me and, and spending the time. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good time. See you later.